guys. So this is going to be a short and sweet sequence to help boost the immune system. So generally speaking, movement and exercise help to boost immunity through encouraging blood circulation and encouraging lymphatic circulation. So that's what we're going to focus on for today's sequence. So what that's really going to entail is a little bit of breathing to help condition the lungs and the respiratory system. And then we're going to move into some kind of short flowy movements to help build some heat. And we're going to focus on areas that have quite a, a high concentration of lymph nodes. So the lymphatic system is um, kind of like a drainage system in the body, which helps oust any toxins. So if you read last week's newsletter, when I was talking about dry skin brushing as one of the daily rituals that I do at the moment, um, that's kind of the same premise that you're trying to stimulate the lymph nodes to basically get rid of waste products in the body. So they're mainly concentrated in places like the armpits and um, the collarbones, the groins, the creases behind the knees. Um, so we're going to focus on those areas a little bit if we can. So all you're going to need for this sequence is a blanket if you have one. Um, I do have a bolster as well, but it's going to be optional. So you'll see what you have indoors that you can use. So we're going to start lying down. If you want to come to lie on your back. And just rest the head and the neck on the blanket there. And keep the knees bent, feet on the floor. And just place the hands either side of the rib cage. So the elbows are out quite wide and the upper arms are resting on the floor. And then you might just spread your toes and ground the soles of your feet. And then go ahead and close the eyes. We're just going to spend a couple of minutes working with our breath. So just take a moment to drop in and soften the expression on the face. Notice any tension across the forehead or in between the eyebrows. Try to release the muscles around the eyes and soften the jaw. Now through the sensitivity of the hands, you're just going to start to feel how the breath is moving. So as you breathe in, you feel the rib cage softly rising and expanding out to the sides and into the hands. And as you exhale, you follow the breath softly releasing and the hands moving slightly closer together. So just stay with that for two or three cycles of your breath, just feeling. And once you start to feel a little bit more comfortable with your breath, just see if you can start to gently deepen and lengthen the breath. So on your next inhalation, you draw more breath into the body. You feel more soft expansion through the rib cage, the diaphragm, feel the hands filling up with breath. And then on the exhale, slow the breath out down and really empty the lungs, complete the breath out. And just do that for a few cycles. So you're starting to gently 
home the lungs by inviting them to softly expand a bit further than they would perhaps naturally on the in-breath and then consciously slowing the breath out down and just pushing that last bit of air out of the body so any stale bits of breath release And now just to add to that finally, at the top of your next inhale, so take that nice full, deep, expansive breath in, try to hold the breath at the top very lightly so you're not constricting or contracting the throat, but feel the fullness in the lungs. And then as you need to, exhale all of the breath slowly and completely and then at the very end of the exhale lightly pause at the end and as you feel the need to again take your nice full inhale through the nose pause at the top of that breath in feel the fullness retained in the body as you need to exhale slowly, release all of the air from the lungs. At the end of that breath out, you softly hold the breath. And then one last time, take a nice full inhale, feel the breath rising up and expanding and filling the lungs, holding the breath in at the top. And then as you need to, Last time, slowly exhale all of the air. And then come back to your natural, everyday breathing. Very good. Okay, let's open the eyes. And take the arms out into a wide cactus shape. Okay, so the blanket might get a little bit in the way, so you just need to adjust that slightly. But the elbows are roughly in line with the shoulders. Forearms are at a right angle to the upper arms. And then take the feet a little bit wider. You might want to adjust your shoulder blades slightly down the back. And then just take a few slow windshield wiper movements. So the knees lower down to one side. You can start on any side that you prefer. Lightly press the top knee a bit further forward and down and direct the tailbone toward the space between the heels. And then come back through the middle with the knees and go the other way. And you feel that transition across the lower back as you go from one side to the other. And the feet are lightly flexed as you go from one side to the next. Come back up through the middle and go the other way. Now just move at your own pace, guys. So you can work a bit slower or a bit faster, depending on your breath. So we're just gently warming up the space around the groins. So you'll feel that there's a little bit of an opening at the groin space on one side. We're gently releasing the pelvis and getting a bit of movement into the hips. Now, whichever side you started on, try and finish up on the opposite side. Okay, so knees go down to finish on the opposite side. And then you're gonna come back through the middle. Now, as you do, bring the feet back to hip width and move the blanket off of your mat. Draw both knees into your chest and give yourself a nice big squeeze. Okay, maybe take a little bit of a rocking action side to side if that feels helpful. You might want to move in more of a circular way as well. And then bring the hands to the backs of the thighs. Gently squeeze the inner legs together and start to take a couple of controlled rocks forward and back along the length of the spine. Not always the most graceful thing in the world. 
So once you've done that a few times, you're going to come all the way up, cross your shins, and try and work your way back onto hands and knees. You might have to shimmy back on your mat a little bit. Shoulders stack over the wrists, hips stack over the knees. Okay? So you're going to start to work through your cat cow. So on your breath in, soften the belly and try to move the breastbone forward and up slightly as you slide the shoulder blades down the back. On your exhale, press into the hands and dome the upper back to the ceiling, tuck the chin into the chest. And just keep going with that both inhale, belly soft, collarbones wide and the breastbone moves forward through the arms. On the exhale, press into the hands and round. Okay. Now the particular focus here is on the breastbone and the movement on the inhale. So here as we bring the breastbone forward through the arms and we slide the shoulder blades down. Now there's a reason for that, so just keep going. There's a gland behind the breastbone called the thymus gland. And it's particularly important for developing white blood cells, which is part of our immune system. It's part of our antibody system to help fight viruses and bacteria. So really think about kind of opening that space across the collarbones as they widen here and you bring the breastbone forward. You slide the shoulder blades down so you feel like the front of the heart is open. Just do that one more time. And then after this next inhale, as you bring the heart forward, and then you're gonna come back to a neutral position, okay? Downward facing dog. Let's walk the hands a little bit forward of the shoulders, spread the fingers, tuck the toes, and send the hips up and back. And just take a few breaths. So the palms are nicely spread. There's a grounding of the base of the thumbs and index fingers. And you're spreading the palms and pressing the ground away to feel the, the pelvis rise and press back. You may want to pedal through the legs if that feels helpful. The higher you come onto the balls of your feet as you pedal, the more you're going to get a nice stretch into the toes, the toe joints and the balls of your feet. And just come back to a static down dog. On the inhale, raise your right leg. Okay, try not to disturb the pelvis too much. And on the exhale, step that foot through between your hands. So it might be that you need to help that foot forward. Lower the back knee. Okay, you can always use your blanket to cushion the knee if you need to. Undo the back toes. Now push down into the right foot to rise up. Keep the arms relaxed. And then interlace the fingers and plant the hands onto that front thigh. So you're going to push down onto the thigh and start to lift the chest. Now try to tilt the pelvis slightly back. So if you imagine the bowl of your pelvis tilting back, meaning the tailbone is going to start to point more fully downward and the frontal hip bones will start to lift slightly and the navel will kind of move up and away from the front thigh. Now once you have that in place, square the pelvis to the front and then find a nice depth in that front thigh. So bend the front knee without coming into this really curved lower back situation. Tailbone is still lengthening down. And what you'll find that does is it brings a nice opening here into the front of the thigh at the back. Hook your thumbs, spread your fingers, raise your arms. And lift the breastbone toward the ceiling as the centre of the, the sides of the waist rather extend. And then from there, let's release the thumbs, bend the elbows and start to cactus the arms out to the sides. Try not to bring the elbows any lower than the shoulders. Spread the fingers and then try and send the forearms and the elbows back and lift the heart. Let's take another full breath, easy in the neck, 
and then release the fingertips to the ground. You tuck the back toes, lift the back knee and step forward. So you're coming into a forward bend, feet about hip width apart, soften the knees, hold on to the elbows, take a couple of breaths. Release the head and the neck down, maybe nod and shake. Change the cross of the forearms. Good, and then release the fingertips to the floor. Now, <clears throat> we're going to take the feet a bit wider, not quite as wide as mat width, and we're going to turn the toes outward really slightly. Okay. Now bend the knees. Sit back into a squat, a yogi squat. We call this malasana. Now you might find that your heels don't want to go to the floor, which is perfectly normal. You may want to cushion with blankets or blocks underneath the heels, but if you're happy to just balance on the balls of your feet, then you can do that as well. Now if you can, palms come together at the centre of your chest. But again, if you're struggling with balance, if the heels are lifted, then don't worry too much about that. So here we're just trying to encourage a nice opening around the groins again and a widening across the collarbones. So the elbows lightly press out into the inner knees, but the knees, the outer knees are then gently hugging in. So there's a kind of resistance there. And you keep the collarbones wide as you lift the breastbone. Take another couple of breaths. And then release the fingertips down, start to lift the hips, come back into a fold, walk your feet back to hip width apart, interlace the fingers behind you, stretch the arms up and over the head, just for a breath or so. And then release the arms all the way down. So on your breath in, hands to shins, lengthen the spine forward. Exhale, fold back into the legs, release the head and the neck. Let's stand on the inhale, so reach the arms up. Go wide if you have space, touch the palms overhead, look up. And then exhale, lower the hands to the heart. Good. Let's release the hands onto the hips. So we're going to keep our right foot forward. On an inhale, raise the left knee about hip height. Exhale, step back. Okay, we're going to turn to the left. And we're going to take our feet out. Turn the feet outwards, so the heels are in, the toes are pointing out, feet quite wide. So let's take hands to hips initially. You're going to take a breath in. As you breathe out, bend both knees and come into temple pose. Okay. As you come down, try to bring the heels in a bit more, but be mindful of balance. Okay. Now hook your thumbs again, spread your fingers and raise your arms. Keep the sides of the waist lengthening upward, but direct the tailbone straight down. And this is going to bring a lot of fire into the legs. And also we're getting a nice opening again through the inner groins. So let's take a little bit of a pulse. Let that fire start to build. Try and spread the toes and ground into the outer edges of the feet. Just a few more. Find a bit more depth if you can. And then slowly come all the way up. Good. Release the hands behind you. Interlace the fingers. Parallel the feet. Open the chest as you inhale. Lift the heart. On the exhale, start to fold forward. So hinging at the hips. Folding forward. This time with the legs nice and wide. Send the arms up and over. Just take a couple of breaths. Try not to lock the elbows. Spread the toes and ground into the outer feet. And then release the fingertips down. Bring yourself up about halfway. Okay. Firm the belly. Bring the hands onto the hips. Start to rise up slowly. And then from there, we're going to turn the right foot to point forward. So nice wide stance, send the arms out wide. Let's look over the right hand. Inhaling there, as you exhale, find warrior two. So you're gonna find a nice depth of lunge in the right knee. Spread the left.
left toes and ground into the outer edge of the foot. Squeeze the right knee open, take a couple more breaths. Now on your inhale, straighten the right leg, raise the arms, touch the palms and look up. And as you exhale, open back out into a nice deep warrior two. Do that again, inhale. And then exhale, opening out. Two more times. Last one. And then we're going to reverse the warrior. So as you breathe in, flip the right palm, send the right arm up, go slightly back, open into the right waist. And then on the exhale, bring the other hands to the ground, pivot to the ball of the back foot and find downward facing dog. Now for those of you that would like to, you're going to move through a vinyasa. So if you wish, inhale forward to plank pose. Exhale to slowly lower through Chaturanga or with the knees down. Inhaling through Cobra or Upward Facing Dog. And then meeting us back in Downward Facing Dog. Very good. Let's lower the knees down. Just take a few breaths in Child's Pose of Balasana. If you need to use anything under the head or between the sitting bones and the heels, you can. moment breathing into the back of the body. Let's make our way back up. So downward facing dog guys. Tuck the toes, send the hips up and back. Now when you're ready to inhale, you raise your left leg. And as you exhale, step the left foot through between the hands. Help it forward if you need to and lower the back knee to the ground. Undo the back toes, bring the torso upright. Interlace the fingers and plant the hands on the front thigh. So again, you're pushing down, starting to lift the chest but again the pelvis begins to roll back or, or posteriorly tilt so it has a backward tilt so the tailbone wants to direct down a bit more the frontal hip bones will lift as that happens and you'll feel the navel kind of drawing up and away from the front thigh now try and maintain that as you find a nice depth to the bend in the left knee so just explore coming forward. Feel what happens in the back thigh. And then hook thumbs the other way, raise the arms. Send the sides of the waist upward. Lift the breastbone, maybe the gaze, take another breath. And then on the exhale, bring the fingertips to the ground, tuck the back toes and lift the back knee. And then as you can, step forward. So you might have to get a bit of momentum. Soften the knees, hold on to the elbows. Release the head, the neck, spread the toes, evenly ground the feet. Change the cross of the arms. And then release the hands down. Take your feet a bit wider again for Balasana, a yogi squat. So you're gonna bend the knees, sit low. Bring the palms to touch if you can. Snuggle the elbows in to the insides of the knees and legs a bit more. And then as you press out into the knees, the knees gently hug back into the elbows and the chest lifts. Collarbones remain wide, back of the neck is long. Take another breath. And then release the hands, lift the pelvis, come back into your fold, interlace the fingers behind the back. Try and find the alternate interlace, so the weird set of fingers go on top. Just take a breath or two. And then release the fingertips down. On the inhale, hands to shins, lengthen the spine forward. Exhale, fold back in, release the head and the neck. 
Stand on your inhale, so reach the arms up, look to the palms and lift the gaze. On the exhale, lower the hands to the heart and then finally to the hips. So keeping the left foot forward, inhale, raise the right knee about hip height. Exhale, step that foot back. Turn to the right, find your temple pose position. So the feet turn outward. Inhaling there, exhale, bend the knees, sit nice and low. Maybe adjust the heels in a bit if you can. Hook the thumbs the other way, raise the arms. And then once you've got a nice depth, tailbone pointing down, you might start to pulse a little. So really stimulating the inner groin space, lifting through the sides of the waist. Good, spread the toes, ground into the outer feet, last two. And then come all the way up, release the arms behind the back, interlace the fingers. Again, try and find the weird interlace as you parallel the feet. Inhale to lift the chest, move the hands down toward the floor. And then exhale, hinge forward, fold. Take a couple of breaths. Spreading the toes, grounding into the outer feet. And then release the fingers to the floor. So you're going to lift your torso. You're going to firm the navel. Hands to hips or waist. Push out into the feet to rise up so the legs are nice and strong to support you. At the top, turn your left foot to point forward, heel to arch. Send the arms out wide. Look over the left fingers. Inhale there as you exhale, find a nice depth of lunge in the left knee for warrior two. Spread the right toes and anchor back into that foot. Now on your next inhale, straighten the left leg, raise the arms overhead, touch the palms, look up. Exhale, open out warrior two. Nice depth of lunge. On your inhale, straighten left leg, raise the arms, touch the palms. Exhale, open out. Good, two more. Each time you come into warrior two again, try and find a bit more depth and make sure you're squeezing the left knee open so it's tracking forward. Good, last one guys. Exhale to open out warrior two. This time on the inhale, reverse the warrior. Flip the left arm to the ceiling. Inhale, reach up and back. And then on the exhale, we mill the hands to the ground, pivot to the ball of the back foot, downward facing dog. Working through your vinyasa, if you wish to, or pausing in downward facing dog. And then a few breaths in child's pose. When you're ready to bring the knees down, sit back. slowly making your way up to sit from here. Okay, so we're going to finish the kind of more active part of the practice with a camel pose. So you might want to find your blanket here. If you have a bolster, I'm going to show you a nice variation that you can do to be more supported in camel pose. But we do want to cushion the knees. So I would suggest putting a blanket across the mat and then coming to stand on the knees with them hip width apart, knees on the blanket, okay? Now for those of us without any props at home, we're going to tuck the toes under and lift the heels, okay? For those of us that have a bolster and want to try a supported variation, you're going to keep the toes untucked and you're going to place your bolster across the bottom calves and ankles so the heels will kind of be hooking the bolster up in place okay 
So, hands to the lower back, fingertips pointing down. Now we start to squeeze the elbows in, okay? Now just know guys that you can pause at any point here. If you have any lower back niggles and you find that the more you progress into camel pose, the more you feel tension in the lower back, then just pause or come out slightly, okay? Don't have to do the whole thing. But if you can, elbows start to squeeze in so you feel the collarbones and the chest kind of broaden. The tailbone lengthens down, the frontal hip bones lift, the same way they did in crescent moon pose where we have the lunge position with the knee down. Now from here, the glutes are gently firm. We keep squeezing the elbows in and lifting the breastbone toward the ceiling. Now we keep working with this for a few breaths until we start to feel that we're working a bit more of an upper back bend. So think more upper back extension as opposed to lower back. Keep the pelvis or the hips over the knees and then see if you might reach one hand down either finding the bolster or your heel and then the other hand works down. The hips stay forward over the knees. Push down into the bolster or the heels as you lift the chest. So the whole front body is open. Now for me, I keep chin to chest because my neck starts to grip if I let the head go back. But if you want to release the head back, you can. Just make sure that you can breathe well. Now bring one hand back to the lower back, then the other hand to support yourself on the way up. Tailbone lengthens down. Undo the tuck of the toes and sit back onto your heels. Rest the hands. Just take a few breaths. Good. Let's do that one more time, guys. So come up to stand on your knees. If you want to challenge yourself a bit more, then untuck the toes. And work with the heels okay I'm going to keep my toes tucked under so hands to lower back elbows in tailbone lengthens down so you'll feel the frontal hip bones and the navel kind of drawing up and in slightly and then you start to squeeze the elbows lift the breastbone toward the ceiling feel the upper back begin to extend a bit more but think about the trajectory of the heart being upward as opposed to backward Hips stay forward of the knees, and then you can reach down. Just try and find the heels or the bolster. And then you push down into that support to find the lift. So the rooting of the hands invites the heart to lift. The front of the body is nicely open, chin to chest, or you can release the head back a bit more. And then one hand moves back to the lower back, and the other hand as you come up. Direct the tailbone down, sit back onto your heels, or sit another way if you need to. Close the eyes and just take a few breaths. You might even put one hand on the heart or the centre of the chest and just feel the strength of the heartbeat now. blanket off to the side. You can always sit on it if you want to, so you might want to keep it nearby. I'm going to turn to face you guys at the front. Now we're going to sit our bum down to the right hand side. So end up in this position. And then that left foot is going to step over to the outer right knee. Okay, so Ardha Matsya Andrasana. Now you might find here that you're not quite on both sit bones, which is ideally what you want to be doing. So if that's the case, sit on your blanket or stretch the underneath leg forward, which is going to help you to ground the sit bones a bit more evenly. Okay. 
Now from here, ground the left big toe into the floor, take the right hand to the left knee or shin, and start to turn lightly to the left. Place the fingertips behind you. So just take a, a full breath in, lengthening upward with the spine, keeping the sitting bones rooted downward. On the exhale, start to turn the rib cage and chest to the left hand side. The left shoulder head gently draws back, take another inhale. And then on the exhale, slowly release. Okay, counter it the other way. So fingertips go down to the right hand side. And you turn briefly that way. And then come back to the centre. Okay, now let's straighten, if we haven't already, straighten that right leg forward. Step the right, uh, sorry, step the left foot back over and then open the knee out wide. You may, again, want to sit on something here or if this left knee isn't on the floor, if it's really far away from the ground, kind of hovering, you may want to have some kind of support for the outer knee, okay? Flex the right foot, take the fingertips either side of the right leg, and turn the navel very gently toward the right, so you're lining yourself up with the straight leg. Inhaling there, on the exhale, start to fold forward. This is Janu Shushasana, which means head to knee pose. So you start to fold over the right leg. Maybe we could reach a hold of the leg, the ankle, the foot. But as you come down to fold, just readjust yourself so that you're turning the torso downward over the straight leg. Okay, so you might turn the navel over the thigh a bit more. And then gaze turns down and you take a few breaths. And again, you might feel the breath kind of filling up the back body. So as you inhale, you feel the back rib softly expanding outward with the breath. And then slowly bring yourself back up. Help that right knee back, sorry, left knee back in. Stretch the left leg forward, okay? Now bring the right knee into your chest, plant the foot, step the foot over so the big toe is rooted and you're to the outside of the left knee. If you bent the underneath leg last time for the twist, then do the same thing here, but make sure both sitting bones are grounded evenly. And then take left hand to right knee, turn the rib cage and chest lightly to the right fingertips behind. On the inhale, sit nice and tall. On the exhale, start to turn to the right a bit more deeply. The neck is relatively neutral here. So I would suggest that you just keep the chin somewhat in line with the breastbone. And then on an exhale, start to undo. Counter it the other way, so fingertips move down to the left, keep the torso upright as you turn the other way. And then slowly release, straighten that left leg, and then step the right foot over, and open the right knee out to the side. Again, if you had some support under that knee, just do the same thing on this side. Flexing the left foot, fingertips either side of the leg. Start to gently turn the navel kind of toward the left. So you start to line yourself up. So when you fold forward, you're directly over the center of the leg. Take a breath in to lengthen and prepare. On the exhale, keep the rotation as you start to hinge forward to fold. And then you might find that you can reach a hold of the leg at some point ankle, foot, but don't worry too much. And again, as you start to fold down, I, I tend to just readjust myself, trying to turn myself more fully over the straight leg. So you have to kind of adjust the belly and you turn the gaze down. 
a few breaths. slowly make your way back up. Very good. Okay, last one we're going to do here. We're going to bring that right knee back in and then we're going to draw the left knee up in as well. Bring the feet together, open the knees out wide. So Baddha Konasana, which is bound ankle pose. So holding on to the front ankles perhaps. Some people might hold the feet or hook the big toes. But just find a grip that's comfortable for you and start to gently lift the chest. Allow there to be a nice opening across the collarbones, taking an inhale here to lengthen the spine. On the exhale, just see if you can hinge forward at all with the spine. So when I say hinge forward, it's not a rounding of the back, but a hinging from the, the pelvis, so the spine stays relatively long. Now if you come forward a little way and you feel a bit top heavy, you might feel better walking the hands forward. Okay. Then turn the gaze down and close the eyes. The heels are gently pressing into each other and the knees are moving outward. The shoulders are relaxed and we try to soften the expression on the face particularly the jaw and the tongue. And then slowly come back up. And help the knees back together using the hands. And then we're going to come to lie down. So if you wanted your blanket there under the head, if you want to put any layers on, maybe a jumper or some socks to get cosy. We'll just take a few minutes to relax, but as always with the video, you can just pause and spend a bit longer here if you want to. If you have your bolster, of course you can use that under the knees perhaps. Now, the knees can stay bent or you can stretch the legs forward, it's up to you. I find that because my lower back is quite curved, it supports me more to bend the knees. And just releasing the arms, making any small adjustments you need to make. Close the eyes. And just take a moment feeling the body resting heavily into the floor. Try and encourage that. Encourage that sense of the body surrendering to gravity. Let the breath be very soft and natural. And give yourself permission to take rest.
so don't feel like you're leaving. And bring some movement into the fingers and toes. Maybe a full body stretch. And bring the knees back in towards your chest. One last big squeeze in. Before you then roll off to the side. And gradually press your way up so you're not bringing the head up too quickly. And you come into a comfortable seat for a few breaths, bring the palms to touch. Close the eyes and bow the head forward. Take a moment to offer gratitude to your practice, to your body. And then slowly lift the gaze. Open the eyes. Namaste.